SOA, SOA is based on three concepts. One is the services, another one is called as ESB, Enterprise Service Bus, and the third one is loose coupling, right? So we'll be discussing all these things in detail over here now. Okay, so uh, now the loose coupling is right. The dependency is very less. Okay, so that is called as a loose coupling. The thing is, <coughs> now you are like um, in the spring dependency injection, right? The setter based or the constructor based. You are passing the argument. Okay, and you're getting the information, right? That is loose coupling, rather than creating the object inside the functionality function itself, right? That is loose coupling. Now, if you <coughs> SOA has got policies and processes. For example, let's say the Yahoo is providing the weather forecasting report, okay, uh, uh, service. On internet, then I'll be uh, yeah like I'll be okay. Yahoo will be having their own policies and processes, right? <coughs> so that is like uh, uh, so their own policies and processes in the sense if you, uh, for example if I want to connect with Yahoo and uh, get the weather forecast, let's say I have developed one. Uh, travel website okay and uh, my customers want to know what is the temperature in that area in that period of time right now since I don't have the expertise on that what I will do is I will connect to Yahoo okay and I will provide the the place okay time okay and so these are the two things I will provide the input. Yahoo will return me the forecast, weather forecasting in that duration, right? So it may be for free, it may be as a paid service. Now what exactly I will, how I will be connecting to Yahoo is through internet, right? Rather than doing it manually, I will be connecting to Yahoo over the web. <coughs> over the web, I'll be connecting to Yahoo, okay? like you know I will that is the what Yahoo provides is a web service right on internet they will provide a service they will expose certain functions on the internet so I will be talking to those functions over the internet right rather than me going and manually checking the weather forecasting my program will do the same thing rather than the manual intervention that is the uh, web services now, so Yahoo also will have certain policies that is SOA, service oriented architecture also will have certain rules and regulations. What are the rules and regulations? See, it might have like, you know, one second, hold on please. Okay, it might have the rules and regulations is like, <coughs> first, what it will do, it will uh, uh, accept the request from the customer. Then, uh, the, it expects the customer to send the, uh, customer to send the user ID and password information. If it is the valid user and password information is there, then what it will do, it will validate and it will authentication and authorization, okay? Uh, like, you know, it will verify what facility the uh, customer has got, right? Is it like, you know, single user, like, you know, or uh, uh, only one transaction per day or multiple transactions per day and can I be like, you know, local only or international, any other, the rules and regulations for that particular customer, it will validate. Then, if it is everything is fine, then the uh, the uh, Yahoo will give the uh, uh, the result, whatever it is expected, right? That is called the policies and processes. Every organization which provides the service will have their own policies and processes. Now, 
if you like you know this is only per this is not only pertaining to SOA this is pertaining to regular design also for example when you are developing some code right <coughs> you should really look at what the customer policies and processes are right then you should implement that also you cannot ignore you you should go extra mile and look forward for the policies and process the customer is asking okay the service is nothing but what the uh, actual work is done by the project right <coughs> as i given the example <coughs> sorry uh, yahoo is providing the uh, weather forecasting is a service right so G google is providing a mail support gmail it's a service okay Google Maps is providing the maps of a map of a given location is a service. Anything which helps the user to make his or her life easier is a service provided by somebody else. The service could be for a cost or no cost, right? Okay, this is our service. Now you have to understand that SOA service oriented architecture is mainly depending on a service what service it is providing what service it is giving to the customer how exactly it is easing the or resolving the issue of the customer okay these are the things now <coughs> when you are implementing okay what i will do is i will draw a parallel line for your implementation along with soa right soa okay i'll tell you about that <coughs> now when you are implementing some software right always you should look at right what service you are providing to the user right initially i'll tell about myself like you know in the year 94 95 till like you know 2000 right so i was just whatever my project manager asked me to develop i used to develop and give i never used to think what customer wants what i am providing nothing they say you make a database connection get me the records put everything in a list and give it to me or otherwise you give it to <coughs> the ui people ui people will render into the jsp and they will display that's it all i used to say okay i used to fetch the data i give it to them that's all my job is done i am not worried about what it is doing they asked me to do something i did so i used to be like that later on as and when the time started progressing that I understood it's not that like you know I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do but I'm providing a service I used to ask myself what service I'm providing for these people right so when you develop a software you should always look at like you know what service I'm providing <coughs> right so many times in the design discussions <coughs> Many times in the design discussions, I used to like you know convey to the customer this option would have been better, okay? Because I always look at what service I'm providing to the customer, how exactly it will benefit the customer, right? So in the many design discussions, initial phase of the discussions, basically I used to develop uh, like you know one uh, website with my team uh, for a South African company okay it used to have uh, videos audios and everything it used to be there so like you know I used to provide a lot of inputs to that person like you know the client used to be very happy <coughs> so okay if that is permissible in your company you should always make an attempt what benefit I can give to the customer right so okay now some of the additional attributes <laughs> yeah, please look at this slide. In 30 seconds, you just look at it. Okay, so uh, some of the features of the SOA services are, see this is, this is for the regular software engineering also. Basically, SOA is nothing but your project on a web. Okay, there is not much of a difference between SOA architecture and your object-oriented project on the web. 
it's absolutely the same a, na a different name is given so in this class i'll be talking more of a design how exactly you can design your project <coughs> So you are when you design your project, right? It should be self-contained. I will compare initially with Yahoo. So self-contained in the sense, like you know, uh, I will send the uh, location uh, to which loca at which location I want the weather report and the date I want. So it will it is self-dependent in the sense. If I give, it will give me the response. It will not say 50% I'll give you, you go and search for somebody else, the rest of the 50%. No, that is not what I want. Right? It is self-contained. It might use some other services, but that is still fine. But when I give a request, it will respond me back with what output I want. Right? Abstraction. Right? Now, if you look at, <coughs> that is, see, Abstraction is I will not know the implementation details, right? It's a beautiful concept of object-oriented programming. Okay, so abstraction is I would not know what is the implementation details. All I will give will give you all I will give to Yahoo services the location and the uh, date. And so what I will get is the uh, temperature. That's it. How he is implementing, how is he doing, which service is looking, I don't know anything about it. That is an abstraction you should maintain. Right? Visibility of service is basically like, you know, it should be spread in the word of mouth. It's basically like, you know, if my service is good and it will always spread. Even marketing is also required. Apart from that, word of mouth spreads very faster than marketing because you will it will cut 10,000 times of a sales cycle. Somebody says it's very good, then the people trust and buy. Stateless. The thing is, see, every in flip, flip card, if you go, okay, if I select something, let's say wallet or something, your flip card doesn't store, you clicked on wallet, you search for wallet and like you know, you no, it doesn't store inside the database. Every small transaction it will not store. Okay, the reason being right uh, if million customers are coming so if you store everything in the every transaction in the database then it will become like you know server becomes very heavy okay so it will maintain stateless it is like it if you click on something okay it will just look at it and respond back only if you are in a certain situations it's like you know if you purchase then probably it may store in the database right next is item potent that is sometimes what happens if it is not getting a proper response if it is the data is not coming in a proper range then it will resend the message again right so that is item potent now additional attributes are more reusable composable sla pre and post conditions interoperability and implemented as web services uh, 30 seconds i will give you so please go through all the six the thing is the component is reusable that means if you if I have a weather forecasting service if I'm Yahoo so if I once I have written the Yahoo service okay many people many clients can come and uh, like you know use the same functionality it can be reused every time I need not modify the code for <coughs> the customer unless until I have a uh, requirement to modify it is reusable it is like functions composable it is like okay <coughs> As I said, a service can call another service as a business process in broken into small functionalities. It's like it's mixture of so many functionalities, right? It one will call another. SLA, service level agreement. <coughs> so SOA will have service level agreements. That means, right? I will have something like this. In, uh, I will, while making a contract with Yahoo, I would have said, I would have signed a contract with them saying that out of 100 attempts, 98% I should get the response. 2% downtime is accessible. Anything beyond that, 
okay, you will be charged, penalty would be charged. That is a service level agreement I have. So Yahoo would have said okay for that. Then next is pre and post conditions. The pre and post conditions is that, uh, okay, before getting the request, right, so this is how it is. After sending the request, this is what it should be, right? Yeah, that's what it is. See here, preconditions means customer would have come with some issues, and post condition is resolving the issue of the customer. It is like precondition is the customer yeah, from Yahoo side. If you look, so they would they would have just uh, given the requirement of the uh, like you know the location and uh, the date, and they would not know the information. Post condition is after processing, they will know the information also. That is the post condition. The expectation is that the temperature must be given after processing it. Okay, that is the expected output. That is a post condition. After processing, okay, what is the condition is you should get the results. You must get the results. Interoperability, it is like <coughs> see Yahoo service is provided, okay. So maybe they have launched in Linux. Right. So, but my uh, I have written my code, uh, my web project in HTML in Windows. Right. So I should be able to communicate to that. See, it, it is very easy. It is it is fine because like you know uh, the Windows machine can talk to Linux machine on web. Right. It is a TCP/IP communication on port eight. So that uh, port eighty. So that is not a problem. Interoperability, right? Any machine can talk to any operating system. Okay, any system can talk to any system, irrespective of the operating system or a hardware or anything. That is what is the interoperability. Now, finally, it is implemented as a web service, right? Now, uh, this is about the additional attributes of S4A. Now, let's look at the same thing in terms of like you know, uh, when you are writing a project. Right. So when you are okay, if you look at from a design perspective, now if it if you are writing some application, it should be completely end to end. It is like this is what I am supposed to give. Okay, I will not say only portion of it. That is what your project design means. Abstraction is again like you know client. You will not be giving a public functions and all. You will be giving the private functions or you will not be providing implementation details. Now again when it comes to statelessness, okay, you at the state time of design, right, you should see what you should store in the database, what you should store as part of the variable also, right, as part of the collection also. See storage is like you know it is good and bad, right, it is good when it is required, it is bad when you don't require but still you are storing it right so you should like you know you should make a conscious decision what to store and what not to store right and again as part of a memory management can you make use of the same object rather than creating the objects in a loop right item potent if it is required you can do right in reusable components yes right what you should do is as part of the once you write the function, once you write the code, right? So let's say like, like a developer will write the code and start like you know uh, submitting. No, that is not that. After that, you should look from a design perspective. Okay, the design perspective is number one. First, you should look at okay, is my logic correct? Okay, after finishing, after completely code you are done, right? So it's working fine. Right, because what happens at first shot if you fix the issue, right? You will not know, right? You will feel this is fine. Is the my logic correct? Okay, can I use? Can I implement? Okay, a better logic. Okay, so that means like you know, can I write different for loop? Can I move the object outside? Can I have only one object? Can I make it better? Right, look from okay CPU side. Okay, how much of the CPU it is consuming? Right, and how much of the Okay, uh, can I make it better, right? Look from memory perspective, okay? So how much of memory it is taking? Now, uh, okay, is it possible that can I reduce the size of it? Can I take the user from the input? Rather, like, you know, can I move the hard coding to a file, right? So all these things, right? Then after that, look from, like, you know, bigger perspective in terms of like you know future growth 
okay future growth in the sense now i am giving this like you know can i leave some option for future growth in the sense rather than hard coding can i move that like you know variable to a file and i'll read the file okay tomorrow if somebody wants to modify this they can just modify the file data in the file and read it right then if you are a web programming then you should look at load okay how much of load i can give it to my project okay and uh, if i give 100000 customers where exactly it is crashing okay how much it can handle right then okay so you have to look at the load and some of the negative conditions also okay so uh, robustness is what you should think of right so these are all see when you are after you are done with the code before you check in 10 minutes if you spend asking these questions to yourself and look at it you have already growing okay so you are, the architect in you has already started right so never think that like you know everything will be bed of roses that means like you know no problems will be there directly okay you will be able to uh, execute in a client side in a real time scenario a lot of negative conditions will come okay is there any negative conditions I can handle in the code, right? Is that what you should think? Like you know, I'm connecting with the database, right? So, uh, so there could be many reasons database connection would fail. For example, network connection. Okay, database user ID password is wrong. Then in between there is a like you know lack of internet issues or database server itself is down. Right, so there are. See, you should think of these things. So, design is all thinking about the project and making more robust and thinking from a bigger perspective. Right, what else I can accommodate to make my project strong is design. Right, and uh, like you know, uh, see, you should always. If I don't know whether I'm, I, I'm, I'm just. Uh, making uh, giving you the right things in the sense you are able to understand or not but from a design perspective right you should leave some space for the future growth for example right when you are constructing a house you are taking a uh, like you know site and you are constructed two floors now you will leave some space so that in future you will construct for a third floor and fourth floor also right thinking from that you may not construct at that time but you will think Okay. In case in future, if I construct the third floor or a fourth floor, this will be a good idea. Right now, I will leave as a like you know balcony, okay, or uh, the the empty floor. But in case if I feel like you know uh, make it, it will be good for me. Okay. Now you should see you have written one service or a function or a some code that you should like. It should not be like you have done something. And you are uh, okay. You are uh, like you know, uh, it, it is done. No, the, there it doesn't end your job, right? You want growth, then you should look beyond what you are doing. <laughs> that is, uh, see what I'm see any growth. See right now, I'm not like you know, not required to give you this design uh, uh, details. Actually, I take a design class separately, right? Four module design class but I'm providing this information over here right so that it will be helpful for you the out of so many if at least one get helped out of it I'll be very happy now it is that you have written one function you should look okay you should look at it okay can I make this as a function by passing the parameters okay can I make it a utility function so that many people can make use of this project okay then you will become a centralized person in that project that is secondary but primary is you're providing a, a co commonality right so that is what you should always look at it okay so composable is you can have many uh, services SLA uh, you may not have in a regular condition pre and post condition is input output requirement interoperability you, interoperability is provided in Java so known issues right so only SOA is implemented as web service okay now your fault tolerance should be very very low right so uh, sorry fault tolerance is should be low in the sense okay it should be less faulty right so you should make your system very robust that's what I told you know even in SOA also it does the same thing as I said SOA is your object oriented project on web where you write some functions 
okay, and exposed to the outside world and others will communicate over the web, use those functions as services, right. Let's say I will write one function called sign or square root, right. Now inside a project I will, I will use it, right. That is the service I am providing, right. Now uh, rather than that function providing uh, in the same project, somebody else will, some other company will provide that service. I will connect to that person over the web and I'll use that function is this way. That's all is a difference, okay. There is no difference. A service given by some other company on organiza or organization on the web, okay, and I can access that service using functions is SOA architecture, ESB, okay. ESB stands for Enterprise Service Bus, okay. So ESP is everything in the service oriented architecture, okay. I'll just show you what is ESP means. See here, if you look at uh, this one, see this portion is like a client, okay. This portion is like a service, okay, server, server service. Now ESP com comes in between the client and the server. Okay, in case if I'm writing uh, like you know, yeah, okay, in case if I'm communicating with Yahoo web service, right, first I have to cross through ESP. ESP is like a firewall, right, I have to like you know, I will tell you uh, the functionalities of ESP in a short while. Okay, now you look at this. This is your server product. This is your client, okay, this is your ESP. Right, yeah, it the client communicates through ESB in TCP/IP format, and different well, like you know modules are there in the project. So I, the client can access the product information, client can order the product, okay, can, can see the order flow, client can look at price, like you know customer information is there and account information is there, like a lot of information is available on the server side. For example, I if I call up to customer care of uh, like you know my credit card, okay, first it will cross through the verification of uh, like you know my credit card number, birth, date of birth and other details. Once the verification is done, then I am allowed. So it has to cross through the firewall or the layer of enterprise service bus or some layer it has to cross through. That is ESP. Now let's look at the response, ESP uh, responsibilities of ESP. It is not just like you know the uh, it is not just the information, like you know, it is the, not just the security check. There are so many things ESB will provide, right? Yeah, just look at it, this slide. Okay. Now, providing connectivity. The one rule of a ESB is, like you know, connects between your, the client and the server. Next, data transformation. Okay, some of the things is like you know, let's say uh, the client gives the, for example, the first name and last name, right? Then ESB will look into it and say, okay, there is only two, like you know, uh, but the service needs the uh, full name. So in that case, what it, uh, the uh, ESB will do is it will add the first name and last name, and it will make as one full name as a like you know, it will uh, in between module what the server wants, okay? Okay, and gives it. If there is a discrepancy between uh, the client and the server in terms of data, then ESB will try to see if it can bridge the gap between client data and server data. Then routing. Okay, there is something yesterday, uh, I think day before yesterday I was talking about uh, load balancing or during the web server or application server, I was talking about a load balancing, right? Load balancing is, that is I have 100,000 customers are there, at uh, like you know, every second I'm getting so many transactions. I cannot have one system which can does this job. Now what I should do is, I should have 10 systems. Right, and where the load gets distributed. ESB may take help of the application server, which routes the uh, the uh, request to multiple machines. But that is a role of a ESP. Right, making sure that load gets balanced is a role of a ESP. It may take the help of any other server, application server, anything is fine. But that is a responsibility of ESP. Failover support is that is something called as that is like you know it ensures all the time the service is available. There is no outage. 
right? That is called failover support. That is also the role of ESB, making sure that it is available. Okay, dealing with security is like, you know, as I said, the user ID and password is checked with ESB and then if it is like, you know, correct, then it crosses through the ESB and goes to the corresponding program. Otherwise, it doesn't go. Dealing with reliability. So, it is one of the responsibility of ESB ensures like, you know, the whatever the data is given ensures the output is also matching with that and correct output is going right service management right so uh, if there is any change in the policy right esb is responsible it is like a esb is like a technical manager it will be like a management role also technology role also right monitoring and logging what happens is uh, <coughs> see if you look at uh, the Oracle database or a MySQL database, right? What happens if it is a, there is an option called monitoring and logging. That is, every transaction it will monitor and log. Every transaction, right? Because at the end you want to see how many people have uh, asked to perform the operations from which machine. Every log is maintained because that option is there. Only if you check in, then that is possible. Otherwise, uh, it is not there. By default, it's not there. Right. Similarly, ESP is also like you know, has to provide the support of monitoring and logging. What kind of a transactions are coming? Okay, is a person like you know, repeatedly asking the same thing? Is somebody is trying to hack my server, like to send one million transactions per five seconds? Right. In that case, my server will be down. So like you know, I may have to. Uh, reduce the transactions of this IP coming or I should ban the IP or I should inform the IP address, right? So all these things, right? The, uh, the reliability management of the service, everything is the role of ESB. It is the enterprise service bus. It is a first layer. Right, so uh, like you know, while you are doing the design, you should also take into the connection of like you know, okay, how about the load load balancing payload support? You will not be doing security. Yes, if it is required, you will be doing reliability. Yes, you should look at it. Right, so reliability and uh, so how reliable is that? In case if the data itself is wrong. I'm mean just processing and then giving it, right? And data transformation, like you know, if the client may be wrong at times. Maybe can I ask the input? Is it the right one? See, uh, the Google will if you type wrong, Google will give you a suggestion, right? Right. So that is like you know, uh, do you did you mean this, right? So uh, that kind, of, it is a data transformation. It is a part of ESP, right? So you are trying to say this, but are you trying to say this, right? And one more thing is, like if it is required, then monitoring and logging is also should be taken care. Okay, as part of uh, more of more rather than monitoring, so I will take it as logging. Okay, the logging is the logging is that is like you know whatever it is required to log. Right, you should be logging in. Okay, there are multiple levels of logging. That is level one. Okay, level two and level three logs are there. Level one is the like um, very uh, important. Level two is moderate. Level three is every transaction you will log it. Right, and okay. Next is okay. The type of logging you have is. Like you know, critical logging, okay. Uh, warning, you should log. Errors, you should log, okay. Then information, you should log, right. So whichever you should be able to control this in the uh, text file, okay. If you say critical, only critical should log in. If it is warning, only warning should log in. In Windows, there is something called event logs, okay. Every transaction you perform, it will be logging in. Right, you can check this later on. So your application login. So your application login will specify what and all the things you did with your application. Right? So there are seventy three thousand four fifty four events are there. See. All your application logs will come. Okay? You have security logs. Okay. So there are any security issues or like you know. Uh, so all these things it will log. Okay, then you have system logs. 
okay this is information okay so, okay so you will have logging different kind of logs are there maybe you can try it later on what kind of everything you do in uh, like you know uh, uh, in your operating system that gets logged right so you have an option actually uh, to select warnings errors everything like that right this is called event viewer okay now logging is very important right so uh, if you don't know there is something called uh, log 4j okay uh, log 4j that's a jar file okay you can download that and you can say uh, there is different different functions are there in that okay very small uh, one it is very beautiful you can say log okay so maybe you can say uh, warning uh, so it will go as warning and whatever the warning you want to provide like this okay so a lot of beautiful functions are there in log 4j maybe you can try to explore that later on right okay okay now uh, now let's look at the type of services i'm providing <coughs> okay uh, the type of services are basic services right and logic services compose services and process services now let's look at what is the basic data services just take a look at it so basically uh, basic data services means that like you know uh, updating the customer uh, address okay providing a basic information like I call up to the customer care and I will ask for uh, okay give me what is the balance of the credit card to be paid and like you know uh, what is the transaction why did it happen why the call did not go basic information okay where they provide the service right that is basic data services right so I will have a getter and setter methods right I will say get address so that means it is once I pass the correct information user ID password and I will say get address it will get me the correct address now the logic services okay see basically uh, there is uh, another website called godaddy.com what exactly it will do is first it will ask you the what kind of so basically why exactly godaddy.com is that it will provide the uh, the website for uh, the different kind of business okay it will ask you what kind of a business you are doing in a, like you know if you are in a hotel industry it will suggest you what kind of a website it's supposed to be okay based on the customer needs the decision is made and it is suggested for you okay okay so the one more service some more services could be like you know if you are it'll ask you many inputs what kind of a, a, a you are uh, uh, services what are all the things you provide which area like you know what kind of a crowd is there then you will provide the uh, this one what is that the uh, the price menu and other things you will provide the logical services right if you look at okay if you look at this uh, this one so you have a front end GUI graphical user interface front end ESB comes into the picture we already know about ESB ESB is enterprise service bus where it is like you know it is asking for it will perform a lot of things security reliability right data transformation right uh, load balancing making sure that everything is fine and logging monitoring all these things ESB will provide so there are a couple of in the server side you have couple of data services and logic services which uses the backend database right so this is regular three tier architecture but it is like the SOA architecture kind of the same thing only as I said like you know the ASB is introduced it is like you know if you are implementing like you know object oriented web project okay then it is it is following kind of SOA standards if you are developing SOA then it should have ESB also okay now uh, there is something called compose services compose services is nothing but it's an arc it is also called as orchestra what orchestra will have it is like it will have drums it will have guitar it will have keyboard right a lot of things it's a combination of everything so what you will have is it is a combination of a basic services it will have a logic services so a one service can make use of multiple services also is called as compose services 
okay so it is composed of it is comprises of many services okay if yahoo is providing the weather forecasting that does not mean only one function is doing everything it might have 100 functions okay it might use its own 100 functions okay 20 functions to fetch what information you want right so like that process services is basically it is like you have it's a process how exactly it goes right so first uh, <coughs> so first it goes to uh, the set of website selection from their product will be selected finally it will store in the uh, the cart and all that is a process how exactly the process you should be setting up with your project okay so uh, for as a if you come you come for a uh, this one what is that you come for some process to set in your organization you can go for a process services okay then there is something called business process management okay business process management works at a very high level okay that means to say that is like you know if you look at the top layer of the management CEO, CTO, uh, COO, uh, like you know CFO all these things are a business process management it's a top layer SOA comes in the bottom layer where it implements what needs the service to be rendered right so I'll show you yeah see here the business process okay okay BPM business process sub processes sub sub processes activity and step now if you say business process right okay now if you go to the business process the actual business process now if you say okay how is my business process is running <laughs> BPM is business process management. Somebody else managers will take care. Business process is different. Business processes. I'll go to Flipkart. First, I will select what I want. I'll give a, uh, the product in the search filter. So I'll click on search. It will give me the menu, menu list of items what I'm looking for. Then I will select the product. Right. Once I select the product, I'll click on it. Find the more details. If I compare whatever I need to do, I will do. After that, I'll say add it to cart once it is added to cart then it says a log like you know payment then once payment is successful then they will say billing address will be shipped to this particular billing address will be taken before itself but billing like you know it will be shipped on so on so right okay so uh, it is like this business process management now see like you know uh, one process one sub process will have sub sub process that may have multiple activities and step by step activity for example uh, sending the product to the customer address okay it may be one uh, sub sub process what are the activities involved in it so first of all you should fetch the address from the database about that customer that is a first step second step you should inform the vendor to keep the product ready right then the one intimation then once vendor responds it is ready then the flipkart people sorry uh, amazon people should access that particular product and it, that should be sent to the courier person right the flipkart people should ensure that is being sent then after that the, the the package should be delivered to the customer okay once it is done it has to be updated in the website Right? so that like you know one sub sub process will have multiple activities delivering a product to the customer is one uh, task okay sorry one process so it will have lot of sub process a so lot of activities okay in that activity you have lot of steps okay for example like you know uh, you have to uh, give the product to the uh, courier person first you have to take it check it put it in a box pack it pack it neatly so that it doesn't break then like you know write the customer address then give it to the courier person and that one act one step is done right like this okay the business process at the top layer step will be at the bottom layer yeah yeah please go through this 30 seconds
Correct. Okay. Now, if you look at business process management is very huge. It deals with analyzing business, implementing business strategies, monitoring, optimizing business processes, uh, like you know, establishing corresponding tools and culture and aligning business with IT. All the top level management will take care of these things. Okay, business process management in relation with SOA. Lowest level of activities of a business process are services. Right? SOA is the implementation detail. It has to work. Working is SOA. From the business perspective, it is really not an issue whether the service is basic or composed. What matters is whether the service is doing the required work or not. Correct. What the CEO wants is whether it is delivered or not to the customer, whether it is reliable and it is good or not. Rest of the things is not bothered by him. You use a simple service, you use a compost service, you use orchestration, you use a process service, you use like you know logic service, right? You use basic data service, nothing bothers CEO. Right? All he says is like you deliver it. Okay. Top level is the business process management. Low level at the like low level in the sensor in terms of implementation is SOA. <coughs> Service order architecture is this one. Okay. Now you look at this. So uh, you have customer order. You have some basic data service. Basic data service. It's just an example. Right. So this is for a CRM database, order and logistics and billing. Now if you look at this, let's say uh, you have uh, the product buying online, right? Rather than customer calls in, you take it as customer logs in, okay? Identify customer, record order, then create the product, ship the product, send the bill, right? The record the order may have two processes in between. Right, so this is all the basic. This is from a. This is from the uh, like you know SOA, and this is from the BPM business process manager. This is a business process, right? This is the implementation of the business process. I'll show you in the next slide. Yeah, this is a full-fledged view. Just take a look at it. Thirty seconds, I'll give you. Okay, now it is like the same thing I have, whatever it is, a full-fledged view. Customer logs in, identify the customer. Identify the customer, it may go and take the basic data service. It may be checking from the database whether what is this customer, what and all he has purchased, everything it picks up from over here. Record the order, maybe it may have some like you know data service it may be picking up like you know the information about the product which is coming over from the database you click on a camera like you know camera details it may be picking up from a database okay record order probably like you know so what else uh, the customer adding to the shopping cart all those things okay then finally uh, like you know create a product ship the product send the bill right so everything is like this is from a business process right this is the business process which run this is the the implementation this entire portion is like you know implementation okay see basically your product or a project is from a business process only you have to implement the business process okay so see one of the important design aspect is completely understanding okay uh, customer project data okay expectation and wants and needs right understanding this will take the project a long long way understanding the project will take you uh, this topic will take you a long way, right? So uh, this is very important. Otherwise, if if you don't understand the expectations, wants, and needs, right? Customer will say this is not what I want after implementing the project, right? So like you know, yeah, that is about business process. 
Now, there are SOA will have a different kind of a models, right? One is a business model, okay? One another other is a mixed model, another one is a technical model. What do you mean by a business model? Let's look at. Business model is, is basically for someone where it's like a senior technical manager or a director kind of a person where they can look at the uh, logical division of the entire product, right? So if you look at here, you have a portal, you have, these are all the clients, this is coming here, as part of the process, this is happening, right? Then you have the, the compose service, this is compose service, this is a basic data services, this is a backend layer. So you, they will look at, like the entire whole project will be visible to them. The whole process will be visible to them. All the compose services visible, will be visible to them. And all the basic data services will be visible. All the databases will be visible. Who and all the clients will be. It's like an entire project architecture in a logical way it is divided, right? Okay, see here. In the process section, all the processes are implemented. In the compose section, all the compose services are defined. In the basic section, all the basic data services are defined. In the backend section, all the backend databases are listed, defining the type of data to be stored. It's basically, as I said, senior technical manager or a director kind of a person who can see one, one look the entire project information is provided. Not much of a technical information is provided, but the processes are there, the compose services are there, basic data services are there, what are the databases are there. Everything is provided, okay? That is logical architecture. Now let's look at mixed architecture model. Mixed architecture model, it's a mixture of a logic plus technology. Okay, I'll show you here. See here, ESB has come, Enterprise Service Bus, it is a technology information. Okay, then you have portal, B2B application, B2B applications, like you know, these are all the clients. Now if you see, like you know, little more technical information is provided, business process management engine, then what are the rules are there? So little more technical information is provided here. That's what is explained over here. In if some of the technical details has to be included as part of the providing domain or a logical view of SOA, then mixed model can be used, okay? In the figure, in the next slide, you can see both the technical and logical view aspect. All the service calls are routed through ESB. This I have already told you. Process services are implemented through BPM engine. All the basic, uh, log basic logic services providing business rules are implemented in a rules engine. Okay. All the technical information is there in the view. It also demonstrates the overall picture of SOA architecture model. Okay. Logical view is not contradicting with mixed view and vice versa. They are just different views of the same landscape. See, if you look at like, you know, this one, okay, it is like a complete architecture, no technology information, only process related, more of a business and logical perspective. Now if you look at here, a little, little more of a technology is there, right, ESB is there, BPM engine is there, the, the process is there, what are the rules, are like, you know, you are providing the rules engine, what are the rules provided over here, okay, Re so all the rules, okay, for this uh, basic data services, some more technical information is mixed. Okay, so they are same. The technical architecture model is a complete technical view, right? So in the technical architecture model, more technical details are provided in the view. The changes in the view are given below. ESP in the center, domains are given with the basic and composed services, process are separated as a technical view. Yeah, look at this. It's a beautiful technical architecture model. The ESB has come in the center. There is no like, you know, uh, the process over here. It's completely the architecture technology architecture. This is the client. BPM has gone up because the process is not mainly related with the technology architecture. Process will go into logical view and mixed view. So what are the rules are there? Okay, what are the uh, uh, compose services are there? What are the, uh, uh, the basic data services are there? It's more of a completely technology perspective giving a more detail in the technical architecture model of SOA. Okay, now <laughs> there is something called exchange patterns, okay? So exchange patterns is basically how exactly you send the data, okay? It, there are different ways of exchanging the information between the client and the server. You send the information from the uh, client to the server, 
okay the server will respond that is a two way exchange pattern okay now the client will send the request server will not respond for example updating the customer information you just call him so you say okay sir done so they will be updating you will not get any thing back right that is you are the one way exchange pattern okay uh, that is you have uh, in a networking also you have right simplex duplex half duplex full duplex something very similar to that okay so there is two way you see here consumer is sending a request uh, request processing the request it is responded back for example if you go to flipkart or amazon.com what are you doing right uh, what are you doing? So uh, you click on something. I want detail more details about this camera. You click on the camera. It will give you complete details. Server will send you the details of it. It is a two-way process, right? Now the one way is that like you know I uh, like you know um, I I log into customers like you know Flipkart.com itself and update my customer uh, update my address and say submit. It will say address is submitted. Right? It doesn't respond anything back to you. It just updates. It's a one-way communication. Okay, you send an email to somebody else. That is one-way communication. Whether it comes, it doesn't come. That is still fine. Right? Okay. So there is something called a faulty messages. That uh, like you know, yeah. This is one more thing I want to tell you. I want you to take care during the design. Right? So as okay, okay. Before I come here, I'll tell you. See, there is like you know. Uh, Okay, now let's say uh, you uh, uh, many times when you implement servlets and all, what you get the message is for not for server not found, right? So uh, rather than providing a generic information like that, you can also provide like you know, okay, this is the reason you are not able to connect with us, right? That is more meaningful so that the customer will look into that issue right so uh, see if you are connecting with the database if the database people respond saying that database error where you will look database error means rather if they say the database error could not connect to database due to network issue I will start fixing the network okay database error because our server is down okay now I'll wait for some time right database issue because your primary key violation now I will see why exactly I'm violating the primary key right so when you are responding, when you are providing the error information, any information, provide the sufficient amount of information rather than a generic information, okay, in the uh, error or log, okay, can you provide the required info rather than generic one, okay, very important. Okay. See, this will not. See, if everything is goes fine, then this is not required. But uh, like you know, project or life is not like that. Nothing will go like you know as expected, and uh, it will not be like you know. There will be issues uh, here and there will be there. So that time, logs will help you a lot. Okay. Now the life cycle of uh, like you know uh, the SOA is the same as normal your uh, software engineering that is analysis, design, coding, and testing. The service what you see is first you look at like you know the customer requirement, then you design it. Okay. The, I, okay. Tomorrow I want to implement one service like you know uh, rather. Okay. Now I want to. Uh, online recharge of my mobile that's a service people will log in and like you know recharge otherwise through web also like you know my program also I can log in, like you know recharge or weather forecasting itself right so first I will look at the need then I will do the design what kind of things then like you know I'll implement the code I'll expose the functionality I'll test it I'll make sure it is fine I'll run the product absolutely same as normal regular stuff service identification See, the thing is, I have started my business, right, and I want to uh, implement some service on the web, okay. The thing is, how will I implement? What service I will implement? The first thing is, first I should identify what is the need of the customer, okay. What are they looking for? Can I implement something for them, right. Initially, Facebook has come. It is like, you know, uh, it is like super. Uh, then next level it has come with like you know uh, the WhatsApp 
right? Now, nobody, like, at least I have not seen many people uh, using SMS. They use WhatsApp, they send videos, like, you know, they chat online. So, beautiful application. Now, like, you know, you should look at the need of the customer. You should look at the need of the customer and then you need to identify the service and then you need to do the design, you have to build it, you have to test it, you have to like you know fix the issues and make sure it is robust and everything fine and then release into the market. Right? The same procedure but identification. Service withdraw. Right? The service withdraw is basically like you know what happens. See uh, First, like you know, any service which is provided, like you know, I have a hundred thousand customers are there. It is not immediately possible to withdraw that service, okay? Because many customers are using, and customers are not willing to change to the new pro new version because what issues are there? We don't know, right? If IBM is like you know uh, introduced uh, like you know new service, it is upgradation of the old service. I would not prefer my if I'm set with the IBM service with the old one itself. I'm okay, right? Because I have million customers. Okay, depending on my product. If I if I change the service of IBM to something else, new one. If it has issues, then my customers will complain. Till I can sustain. Okay, I will sustain. If I cannot sustain, then I will move on. It is like I was with, uh, like you know, client server technology for a very long time, right? From '93 to like you know, uh, 2000, right? I was with a client server technology. I was not ready to move. Then I'm forced to move once I went to Oracle Corporation for Java, right? So like you know, in the '98, '99, I started moving to Java, right? So then I moved on to web technology. Like you know, I didn't have a choice. Right. So uh, similarly, like you know, but coming back to IBM, it is it is not easy task, right? So first they will give some time, they will deprecate the service, then they will still support the service for another two years, then slowly they will knock off the service, something like that. It'll happen, right? So uh, this is what how you withdraw. If I have like 10, 15 customers, it is very easy. Then I can tell 10, 15 customers saying that I may please upgrade to the newer version. We are not supporting the older one. Right? Okay, very important. As I said, the first itself, like you know, uh, look from a CPU perspective is the performance I mean to say. Right? So, how is my performance, or performance of my project, if the load is given, if the less load is given? Okay, so this is very, very important either in SOA or in a regular. Like, let me talk about SOA. Actually, it is like this I connect to a web service, right? And uh, like you know, if it is taking two minutes of time to respond, then I start stop using that web service. My customer will not wait for two minutes. Anything in two seconds to three seconds is what I expect. It is like the service I am looking. The performance should be very very high. Otherwise, I will stop using that product. Right. So this is what it is.